everybody. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make some meatball hoagies. But instead of using the frozen meatballs, I am going to be making homemade. I decided to bring it along to show you how I do it. You need about one and a half pounds of ground beef, a beaten egg, and then the rest of this I kind of just eyeball. Uh, I do put parm cheese in there. It'd be best if it wasn't um, shredded. I, it, it would be best if it was grated, but it's fine. I can still try to mix all that in there. Um, some garlic powder, a couple teaspoons of parsley. I'm not going to go too crazy with that. Uh, today we're going to do minced onion. You can do fresh or you can do onion powder, but I didn't have any onion powder, so I'm just going to do the minced. And I kind of want a strong onion flavor, so I'm going to put about three teaspoons in there. Salt and pepper to taste. Half teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. And generous pepper. And then the rest of it's going to be breadcrumbs. Now what I typically do is go ahead and start mixing this by hand. I want to get the... Yes, you can use gloves or a spoon. It's fine. Um, I want to get everything incorporated before I start putting in the breadcrumbs because the breadcrumbs will be dependent on how, how much breadcrumbs will be dependent on how much moisture I have still left from the egg. These are just plain breadcrumbs, not panko crumbs and not Italian. You can certainly add Italian seasoning at this point, or you can get the breadcrumbs with Italian seasoning already added. So that's up to you. I don't like using that. I like adding my own spices, herbs, whatever. So they're starting to stick together. You can see, I'm just gonna put a little bit more in here. And typically what I do is I make these by the pan pulls and then I stick them in the freezer for a little while to kind of harden up a little bit before I bake them just to make sure they're good and cold you could probably do it in the refrigerator but we're not doing anything until it's frozen or anything like that and I usually bake them some people fry them and you can you can do that um, but I bake them because I do not have to watch them in the skillet or anything like that. I can do bigger amounts on a cookie sheet. And that's what I typically do. Let me get that ready to go and then I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to just put them on a dinner plate for now and then I'm going to transfer them over to something I can stick in the freezer. But you have to keep in mind these are going to shrink. So depending on how big you know you you want them that right there is about what a two inch meatball but it's going to shrink up i would say at least by half so we'll do it just a little bit bigger now that's the size that you would probably do for like spaghetti and meatballs but i'm not going to do that big i'm going to take that extra back off and we're going to do it about like this because like i said we're going to make sandwiches so, and we're gonna do about three meatballs per sandwich because the rolls that I'm using are kind of small. So, if you wanted to, you could leave the meatballs on this dinner plate and just stick them in the fridge for about 30 minutes. That should do it. You just wanna make sure they're good and firm before they go into the uh, oven. And, the oven I usually do about 350 to 375 until they're done.
these are fixing to go in the fridge or freezer, either one. Um, I think I'm just gonna stick them in the fridge for about half an hour. Uh, but uh, I went ahead and added a little bit more meat. So I would have enough for everybody. Um, two and a half to three pounds of ground beef made about 30, 31 meatballs um, that are pretty good size. So that'll kind of give you an idea. Maybe 10 per pound. But these can definitely be made smaller. Eggs these days, even though they say large on the container, may not quite be large. So you need to take that into consideration too. So it took two pound, uh, two to three pounds of meat, two eggs, and then, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And you can always, like I said, add more Italian seasoning if you want to, that's fine. Uh, the only thing I think I would add if I did would be basil, but everybody's different and you can also do some spicy. That would be, that would work too. So let me get these in the fridge and then when I'm ready to bake them, I'll come right back. Okay, y'all. So I flash froze these and now I'm putting them on a lined cookie sheet. They're not completely froze solid, but they are just a little bit frozen enough where I can, um, they'll stay kind of intact while we do this. And you're gonna put them in, in about 350 or 375 degree oven and let them just cook until they're done. And then we'll be able to finish our recipe. I went ahead and took them out of the oven. This is the finished product. They are a little bit flat on one side, but that's perfect for what I need them for. Um, and usually you can't really tell when they're in the sauce and you know, if you put it on pasta or whatever. Um, but this is a really, 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 really good um, basic meatball recipe. And 375 for 20 to 30 minutes and they're done. Um, I probably overcooked them just a little bit to be sure. Right now, I'm working on I'm working on some sauce. I'm just going to warm it up. I'm going to pour the sauce over these. I may put them in the sauce. I'm not sure yet uh, because I don't want to get everything too soggy, too messy, too everything. I want to kind of stay, keep my sauce in control, you know, because we're going to put it on this bread. And I'm using these. I seen another YouTuber, she was using these. So this is what we're gonna use. They're uh, Hawaiian hot dog buns. Uh, Sam's Choice, so it's the cheapies. Um, and we're gonna be using provolone cheese. You could use anything else that you, you prefer. Um, but really that's it. It's gonna be meatballs, sauce, cheese, bread, you're done. This is just one jar of sauce because not all of these are gonna go in sauce. Some of these are gonna be left out for those of us that don't like it. So, um, but give me a few more minutes and I will show you the assembled product. And hopefully you'll be able to make these yourself because it's pretty simple. Okay, y'all, so here are the hot dog buns that we're gonna use as hoagies. They're the perfect size, not too much bread. I went ahead and put some of the meatballs in the sauce. You can do that, you don't have to do it, you know, whatever, however you wanna do it. And then three, fit perfect. Okay, and I'm gonna do just a little bit of sauce because I don't want it too messy. And then I'm gonna take some provolone cheese and I'm just gonna put this in the microwave and microwave it. And then that'll be it. And you could do these on a big baking sheet and then do a bunch and then just stick them in the oven. But I want them to go ahead and hurry up and eat this because it's gonna be soggy. So that is it, y'all. It's a really quick, easy way to have meatball subs. And it's manageable and cheap and on a budget. Hey, y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today, I was just gonna show you a real quick lunch idea, but you could do it for supper too. Um, sheet pan nachos. We love nachos. We love anything Mexican, but um, this is a pound of 
ground beef that I browned and I've already drained it. And I'm gonna add taco seasoning. You can do probably two envelopes more and add a little bit of water. All right, and I'm gonna let that cook for about just a few minutes, just trying to heat it up. So this is starting to bubble a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add my Rotel. And so we're gonna add some cheddar. I'd say about three cups worth. Little bit too much liquid for me, so I'm going to get a slotted spoon. Our favorite tortilla chips are the on the mortar ones. You can get a sheet pan, spread out your chips, and I'm not doing uh, a huge batch, so we're not going to fill it up all the way up. Here. A little bit too much liquid for my liking, so probably what you need to do is when you go to put the rotelli in, drain those first. But it's still going to work. And you could make these into individual servings, you don't have to put it on a sheet pan if you don't want to. And then I'm going to put these on in plates or bowls, um, and then probably put some toppings on it, like sour cream would be good. Okay, y'all. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see y'all next time.